choke, no joke, chicky choke, no joke. Choke, no joke, chicky choke, no joke. Choke, no joke. I'm in the building. Come on in. Come on in. And somebody say, Tori need Johnny Depp. Or the baby lawyer for the appeal. He damn the same lawyers he used. He might want to holler at the dream team. Cardi B's lawyers, Lisa and uh, Susan. Come on in, come on in. Flowers, what up, Rod? Got Rowdy Rod in here. The witness said he seen two girls fighting. One went back to the car. He seen a flash. Then the driver got out. And then Tori Kelsey had two years to write this statement. <laughs> Yo, I'm sorry, y'all. But I don't believe Kelsey. Someone was with Kelsey coaching her. She would have bailed Tori out and gave him the buns that same night. <laughs> hey, yo. Hold on. Y'all telling me. That, wait, let, let, let's talk about the, these two audios that... Allegedly, Rock Nation, I'm sure, is doing damage control so Megan could come out and speak. They trying to make Tory look so goddamn bad. This shit is hilarious. Right? So listen. Let's start here. Let's start with the jail call. All right? Let's start with the, <laughs> with the jail call. So y'all telling me. A nigga that just shot somebody is going to get on a jail phone. And the jail phone is going to tell him, you are using a, a, a phone from the Los Angeles County Correctional Facility. All your, your phone call will be monitored and recorded. And y'all telling me Tory got on there and, and incriminated himself because he said, yo, I'm sorry. Y'all think he was... Where did he say, yo, I'm sorry for shooting Megan? Where did he say, yo, I'm sorry for hitting you, Kelsey? I should have never put my hands on you. I should have never shot nobody. Where did he, on, on the phone call, remember, this phone call is no longer than an hour after they got arrested. Two hours the most after the shooting. And you telling me Kelsey was talking to Tori? The guy that just beat her ass, pulled her hair out, shot Megan, and she talking to him on the phone all calm, cool, and collected like that. Y'all can't be that dumb. Y'all cannot be that dumb. Tori just wilded out, shot Megan, beat up Kelsey, 
and calls her from jail, and they talking like nothing happened. Okay. 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 Which one of y'all want to uh, buy this uh, million dollar yacht I got? I got a million dollar yacht, y'all, for two dollars. Who won buy it? If you believe that, I'm selling a million dollar yacht for two dollars. And all nickels. You gotta have all nickels. And it's all yours. So Tori shoots Megan. Tori beats up Kelsey. Get arrested, call the jail, go to jail. They all get arrested. Kelsey gets out. Tori calls her phone. And I, I know she tried to say some shit about, oh, there's other dudes from jail calling to me, this, that, and the other. That's why I picked up the call. I didn't know it was Tori. Okay. And as soon as you heard, I don't even believe that she didn't believe it was Tori because they make you identify yourself. You got a call from a correctional facility from Tori. Right? Don't it say that? Don't it make you announce who you are? All right, even if it don't. You got a, a jail call. Once she heard Tori's voice, y'all gonna sit there and tell me they had a whole conversation? And he, he tell her, yo, I'm sorry, this, that, and the other. He never say sorry for shooting nobody. He never say sorry, yo, I'm sorry for putting my hands on you. That nigga sorry for exposing that he was sleeping with both of them and they got ugly. No person, I don't even care if you not a criminal, is not getting on no jail phone and a man to a crime. Why would he even say he had, he had a gun, anything? So y'all taking that phone call with, with Kelsey and y'all saying that, oh, he admitted that he shot Megan. Okay. Let me ask y'all a question. Listening to that phone call between between uh Tori and Kelsey, right? Did you hear the part when he says, like, yo, Megan ain't going to get in trouble. They going to put it on me. Why would he say that if Megan ain't do nothing? If, Ma if Megan was the, the only person that got injured or was the victim, why would Tori say, yo, this ain't going to look bad for Megan. They going to put it on me. Right? Let, let, let's, let's move from the... To, let's, let, let's just move... Let's, I, I need y'all to use common sense. Let's just use common sense here. All right? A guy just had a fight with me and my best friend. Me and my best friend, he shot one of us and he physically beat up the uh, and he physically beat me up. Now y'all tell me where this makes sense. My guy beats me up and shoots my friend. My friend is at the hospital. I just get out of jail. And he calls me. And we having a cool, calm, collective conversation. All calm, this, that, and other. Kelsey's not mad at him. Uh, 
Then she, uh, like, this is a sidebar, just so when, before I get to the, 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 the statement that she gave the police. This is a sidebar, because it's going to go with that. She said she never, she just met Quan that day. Remember that? She said she just met Quan that day. Talking to Tori on the telephone, Tori's like, yo, I need you to get in touch with Quan. Um, I got to give you his number. She like, I got Quan number. How you got Quan number? Where you get Quan number from? You said you just met him at Kylie House. When you had a time to get Quan number? Or did y'all exchange numbers when you and Quan got out and, and, and uh, Tori was still in jail. You said you just met Quan at Kylie House. That's besides the point. All right, let me let me move past that. Right? Dude beat me up, shot my girlfriend, and I'm talking to him from jail. The whole conversation, it don't sound like Kelsey's mad at Tori. At all. And she's going to help him get out. By getting in touch with it, whoever, whoever, whoever. All right? Now, let, 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 let's move past that phone call. Right? Now, let's go to her statement. Now, remember, Kelsey didn't give a statement to the police the day of, not the year of, not even the next year. She gave a statement two years later. Two years later. Not that night. Not three months later. Not six months later. Not a year later. Over two years later. She gives this statement. Right? Now, when she go give this statement, let, keep in mind what the witness testimony was, and then keep in mind what Kelsey tell these people. And you tell me where any of this shit makes sense. Now, as we know it, Uprise, what up? Good looking. Thanks for the donation. Um, now, here we go in the car, right? Corn's the driver. Megan's shotgun, the passenger. Tori sitting behind the driver. Kelsey sitting behind Megan. Right? Now, check this out. Kelsey says they at the house. EJ, Megan, and Kelsey go to the house by themselves. They not with Tori. She said they get there, they get effed up. She pass out. She wake up. Tori's at the, oh, she remembered Megan FaceTiming Tori, inviting him over. Next thing she know, Tori's over there, whatever, whatever, whatever. She's in one room, whatever, whatever. All right, we move past all, let's move past all that bullshit, right? They leave. Now, remember, EJ said it looked, it was something that Kelsey bagged that looked like it could be a gun. Of course, he's not going to snitch on her and say she had a gun in her bag. That's besides the point, right? They tell EJ to take all their bags out of EJ car, put them in Tory's car, because they going with Tory. Tory says, I'm not leaving. He comes out, yo, I'm not leaving. Yo, he tell Quan, yo, take them home. Kelsey says in her statement to the, the prosecutor, that when they left, Megan kept doing this awkward laugh. 
if you know a, a shysty bitch, you know that awkward laugh was, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I want to say jealousy. I'm going to say jealousy for right now until I find the other word, right? Jealousy because Tori's in there messing with Kylie and she's tight because she can't say nothing because technically Tori is Kelsey guy. So that's why she's doing all that uh, bullshit ass laughing. I, I, I can't think of the word that I'm you. Uh, I'm damn. What's the fucking word I'm looking for? It's so it's like sarcasm. The laugh that she's doing is like she's mad, she's butt hurt that Tori over there he about to pop off with Kylie, and she can't say nothing. So the little awkward laugh is to make Kelsey feel away about some shit. So then she tells she, then Kelsey says she uh, Megan says oh let's turn around I left my slipper. She didn't leave her slipper. She went back to cock block Tori so he can't hit Kylie. She go back to the house. Kelsey says in that statement to the prosecutors that she stayed in the car. Quan, Megan, and, and, and Tori went back. Uh, 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 no, Quan and, and, and Megan went to, in the house. And then all three of them came back. He said that they was arguing. Megan and Megan and Tori was arguing. This is why Kylie kicked them out. Now, why is Megan and Tori arguing? Because Megan telling that nigga, yo, nigga, you getting up out of here. Nigga, you ain't going to uh, sleep with her. And you sleeping with me and Kelsey. So she went in there and cop blocked them. That's why they got into an argument, allegedly. And that's what... Uh, prompt them to the to have the the argument and the fight. And then what Kelsey say? They get in the car, Megan doing that awkward laugh again. That's the shady bitch laugh. Yeah bitch, I fucked your nigga. Uh yeah I fucked your nigga. This nigga he trying to pop off with Kylie. This that and over this nigga think he's slick. Ah uh, that's that old goofy ass uh bullshit. Uh petty ass petty bitch shit. So they get in there in the car, they get to arguing, this, that, and other. And then that's when Tori tells Kelsey, yo, your friend is foul. She a foul bitch. She's sleeping with you, sleeping with me behind your back. Blah, 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 blah. Megan, oh, he lying, he lying. They get into it, whatever, whatever, whatever. Now, in that statement right there, Kelsey don't say to the prosecutors that her and Megan got into a fight. I got into an argument. She don't bring that up. Why she don't bring that up? Because she is she gonna make sure she not incriminating herself to make it look like her and Megan got into an altercation. That's why they just bumped each other. But the Sean Kelly guy said he seen them fighting. So let, let's just let's just keep on let's just keep going with uh, Kelsey's statement in the car. She said, at some point, they pull over on Sunset. Megan get out the car. She go to the bus stop. Tori gets out. He go over there. He talks up, and she calms down. She get back in the car. Get back in the car. Then they start to argue in again. She start to diss him about his music and all this other shit. They taking low bros at each other about the music. Okay. Some way or another, Kelsey failed to mention her and Megan got into an argument and got into and got into it. But what she says is when we driving up uh North Canyon Road or whatever it was, me and Megan got out the car at the same time. 
Now, according to Sean Kelly, he seen both women jump out the car at the same time. One woman go over to the other woman. And started beating her ass. And then the other woman, which I believe is Megan, is kicking the other woman. Kicking the shit out of her. Kicking the shit out of her. Kicking the shit out of her. Kelsey don't say this in that statement. Right? Then the guy says, one of the women go over back to the car. And come out, he sees a muzzle, a muzzle flash. And then he had the three shots. And then there's a pause. And then he see the little guy. He said, I seen the little guy come out from behind the driver. Behind the driver. And come around the car and, and wrestle with the girl. And two more shots go off. And then he changed the story to, then the little guy comes around and he takes the gun and he's shooting it all wildly in the air. Now let's go with Kelsey's statement. Kelsey says her and Megan jump out the car at the same time. Right? She said, all right, Kelsey, jump out the car at the same time. Both of their car doors are still open. Kelsey's 4'11". Tori's 5'2". Kelsey says she was standing behind the back of the door. <laughs> Kelsey said she was standing behind the back door of the, the door behind the passenger door. She's standing, the door is open, and, and, and all she can see is Megan from the chest up. <laughs> hey, yo, she's 4'11", standing on the, in, the, in the doorway of an Escalade. At 411, and she can only see Megan from the chest up. <laughs> okay, let's just say, let's just say I believe that, right? Check this out. Her and Megan jump out the car at the same time. She said Megan starts walking towards the front of the car. She's standing behind the door. Somehow or another, she don't know how, Tori jumped into the front seat. And the passenger seat. And stood up and started shooting over the door. At Megan. So you telling me, yo. Her 411 ass. Is standing outside of the car. With the door open. And she can see Megan from the chest up. And she can see Tori shooting at her over the car door. And she's standing behind the back door. What sense does that make it to anybody? Okay. Let's just say I believe that. This would put Kelsey closer to Tori than anybody else. When they asked her, yo, did you hear him say, dance, bitch? I didn't hear him say nothing. You the closest one to him. You standing right next to him. And you didn't hear him say, dance, bitch. You didn't hear it that night, and you said you didn't hear it when you took the stand. So how did Megan hear that, and you didn't hear it, and you standing right there at the car with him? Which one of y'all? Which one of y'all lying? Which one of y'all lying? 
Did he say Dan's mention no? Because Kelsey, you you said no. He didn't say no. You didn't have say nothing when you gave the statement for the prosecutors and you say he did not say that on the stage. You said who said that? Nobody said that. No, he didn't say that. On the stand, you said you did not see Tory shooting. You said on the stand, you did not see Tory shooting. But in this statement you gave, you said you seen him lick like five shots. Hold on for a second. Hold on, y'all. Hold on, y'all. Let me let me play this. Let me play this, so so I could go by uh, step by step. Let me play this real quick. Hold on, one second. Let me pull this up. One second, y'all. Hold on, y'all. I'm pulling it up.
and uh, he's leaning over uh, the, the door is open, and he's leaning over, like, the door, window, which door? To the theater, right? right? The front, right. So, we're making the city. Okay, sorry. Now, listen to this, y'all. She said they get out the car. Hi, Megan, get out the car. As soon as she get out, she hear the shots. As soon as she got out, she heard the shots. So her and Megan getting out the car at the same time. You tell me, before Megan even get a chance to, to walk in front of the car, soon as she said they both step out, he's shooting? How does that make any sense? She said, as soon as we step out the car, I hear the shots. It's like five shots. Well, damn, Megan ain't even walking to the front of the car yet. Now, she said both doors are open. The passenger door and the back passenger door are open. They both open. She's 4'11", standing behind the back passenger door. But somehow, Tori made this quick, small move from the back seat all the way up into the front passenger. And he's standing outside the door. That fast. Now listen, y'all. She say, Tori 5-2 is leaning over the front passenger door. At 5-2, he's standing up leaning over the front passenger door of an Escalade. Even if he was standing on the rear on the railing, because he would have to his little ass. He's standing on the railing shooting over the door. If she's 4'11 and she's standing behind the door, the door, how the fuck is she looking over the door? Where's she talking about she can see Megan from the chest up? Yeah, my, my body, at this time, I'm standing still by the back door. My body is by the back door. But you can see through two doors to see where this man is shooting at. Okay. Once again, she said, I'm out the vehicle, but I'm not around the door yet. Which means she's standing in the doorway of the car. So the, 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 if, if somebody was shooting at her, the bullets would hit the car door first. Well, actually, it would hit the passenger front door first. And then if a bullet went through the door, it would hit the, 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 the back passenger door. So she's standing in the doorway of the back of the... the and the windows is tinted, but you can see Tori shooting her at 411. So let's let speak on Megan. Um, so she was walking away when this happened. But by the third or fourth shot, and by the time I look up, she's facing towards. Now she said, Megan is walking away. 
So you standing in the doorway with the door open. Tori's in front of you with the door open, standing over the thing, shooting, and you can see Megan walking away? And you can see Megan walking away. Okay. Even if we believe that, let's go. Now she said, by the third shot, Megan turns around and she's looking at them like a deer in headlights. By the third shot. Now remember, Sean, whatever his name is, Sean said that the th after the third shot, that's when Tori exited the vehicle and ran around from the driver's side around to the passenger side and had to struggle with Kelsey and the gun went off again. Nobody remember that? That it was three shots before Tori even got out the car? Nobody remember that. You heard what she said? The vehicle is raised up higher than me. I'm only 4'11". So I can only see her from her chest up. Huh? You 4'11", at an elevated Escalade, and you telling me you can see, you can only see Megan's from the chest up. From her breast up. Megan must be a tall motherfucker, dog. She must have been standing like Andre the Giant. For her to see her, her head and, and her titties over that car door. And she walked away. Come on, man. The way Tori was angling the bed is kind of like... It wasn't like straight. Now she's saying she's standing behind Tori. She's standing behind the car door. But she can tell, and, and Tori's leaning over the passenger door. And she's talking about she can see the angle that he's shooting the gun. Come on, man. So he, uh, Tori only wanted to shoot her in the feet. He didn't try to shoot her in the chest, the arm, the leg. He just he just aimed the gun now at her feet. But you ain't hear him say dance, bitch. This shit, man. Yeah. Y'all heard him? He did not, they asked him, did he say dance, bitch? He did not say anything. It was no words at that point. So where did dance, bitch, come from? Now listen to this, y'all. She's saying Tori threatened to shoot her. Not the same nigga that called you from jail and you took his call. 
Not the same nigga that beat your ass and you took his call. Episode 
What is he coming over to y'all for without the gun? So he shot it and he just went and put the gun away? So, like I said, uh, my, I just thought he was coming over to attack us. So I um, stepped in between where he was coming to, where I was. And at that point, that's when the assault between me and him happened. He assaulted me. Um, and Quan then comes up. He just comes and he picks me up like a little doll. And he's like, Kelsey, and they do this all the time. And I said, huh? Okay, now that makes sense to y'all too. Tori comes over to her and starts beating up on Kelsey. And Quan comes over and pick Kelsey's up, pick Kelsey, and pick Kelsey up and take her away and say, Kelsey, they do this all the time. Y'all don't remember. The dude Sean testimony saying how Quan, Tori, and Kelsey went over to Megan and started beating on her and picked up and dragged her into it and put her back in the truck. Probably scared that the police was coming so they could hurry up and get the hell out of there. So now Tori beats her up. And then Quan comes and just picks up and says, yo, they do they do this all the time. Huh? So Quan then pulled Tori off of you? Like Quan is sitting there watching Tori beat you up. And he comes and grab you. Not Tori. He grabs you. Now Quan comes in and separates Tori from them. That ain't what you just said. You said Tori walked up on you. I mean, walked up to confront Megan or to say something to Megan. You stepped in in defense of Megan. He beat you up. And now, now Quan comes and removes Tori from beating you up. Before you just said... Tori jumped on you and Quan came and grabbed you and lift you up and took you away and said, yo, they do this all the time. Now he took now he took Tori away. I mean, everything my adrenaline was so high. Um, I don't know if he was hitting me with a close fist or slapping me. I, you know, it was just a, it was a physical altercation. Were you in an episode? All right, so now she don't know if the nigga slapped her or punched her. Because the adrenaline is so high, she don't know if Tori slapped her or punched her. But she can remember the angle that he shot the gun. But she can remember he jumped up into the front seat. She can remember Megan walking away from him. She can remember Quan grabbing her and picking up. But she can't remember if he slapped her or punched her. That sound like to me, just my opinion, Quan was pulling Kelsey off of motherfucking Megan. Huh? Wait, we they do this all the time, Kelsey. Huh? Huh? What? What? And now he's pulling me. Why would he be pulling Kelsey away, picking Kelsey up 
away if she's not the aggressor. She's been shocked, to my knowledge. Um, and so I'm still in defense mode. I'm still in, you know, like, we have had a protection. So uh, I look up and I see the vehicle. It's in the middle of the road and it's on, the door is open. So my initial reaction is to cause a distraction. And uh, I jumped into the vehicle and I threw the jerk. Okay. <laughs> hey, yo. hey yo, this girl said she was still in defense mode. So her first instinct was Tori was in the driveway with Megan. So she got in the car. She got in the car and put it in jerk mode. They like, what's jerk mode? I guess she was going to fake like she was going to drive and hit them. And that worked. Okay, you in defense mode. A nigga just shot your friend, just beat you up, and you don't call 911? Megan don't call 911. A nigga just shot y'all and beat y'all both up. In the middle of a dog block, y'all both got y'all phones. And you don't call 911. You don't yell out, help, help, in the residential area. Okay, okay. How do you get in the car, you don't put it in drive and make it jerk? How do you get in a car and make it jerk without using a throttle, uh, uh, the, the gas shift? How do you get in the car and make it jerk to the point where you scare somebody? When she got in there behind the, uh, the, the steering wheel and started shaking the car? Y'all believe, y'all be, y'all believe anything, bro. Y'all believe anything. Y'all believe anything. I don't know how people don't use common sense. She got in the car. She didn't put it in drive. She just did that to make it jerk, to scare Tori. But you would not scare him picking up your phone, dialing three numbers. You rather get in the car and act like you're going to do a vehicle, vehicular homicide, like you're going to run him over while he's standing there with Megan. So you scared them while he's over there with Megan by making the car jerk. You thought you was going to hit him and not her? It did exactly what I needed it to get Tori away from Megan. Um, and so he either, I don't know how he got to the vehicle. I don't know if he ran or walked, but he got to me really quick. And that's when he pulled, he started pulling me by my hair. He pulled me, he was pulling me by my hair um, really hard. And again, once again, she don't know how he got to the vehicle that fast. She got in the car, she made a jerk, and Tori ran over to the car, and girl, you just said the nigga was sitting in the passenger seat after the shooting. Oh, and then he came over to Megan, you ran to the car, you jerked the car. The car was not in the fucking driveway. The car was not even pointed in the driveway. So you getting in the car, if, if Megan crawled over... And it's on the floor in the driveway. And Tori's over there messing with her in the driveway. You getting in the car making a jerk was for what reason? You was going to drive the car through the man house? Through the man garage? Are y'all serious? She got in the car and made the car jerk? And Megan's on the floor in somebody's driveway 
Tori's over there in the driveway with her, and she got in the car and made the car jerk, and that scared Tori. And made him run away from Megan. Like, I'm standing right next to Megan. Run us both over. So she was going to drive the car through somebody's driveway, right? This is what y'all telling me? Megan's on the floor in the driveway. Tori's at the driveway. Well, she gets, she ran, jumped in the car to make it jerk to scare Tori. Huh? You would have scared Megan too. So she wasn't afraid for her life when Tori was shooting the gun. When Tori shot, allegedly shot Megan, she wasn't afraid for her life. She was afraid for her life when he was pulling her hair. That's when she got afraid. Y'all believe this. I swear, I, yo, I, I, I ain't going to be talking about this not much longer. Because it is, it's frustrating to me that people could be this goddamn... Gullible. Um, that's when the guy was, he said he pulled her hair back. You know, like, he was, like, almost, like, I didn't lose my friend, so I wouldn't say choking, but he was pulling my neck and my hair. And then, so, here comes Quan again. Uh, and, uh, Quan kind of, he's in between us. But Tori has to be great. He's not letting go. So, it's kind of like tug of war at this point with my head and body and I'm scared, and I, you know, and I, I kind of dumb myself down just to get him to let me go. And uh, and I said, uh, Tori, what are we doing? What, what 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 are we doing? And when I said that, he released. He um he let go. And so now Megan is standing. We're all standing at the front driver door. Did you see how Megan got to the front driver door? I can't tell them. She was like, how the walk? I can't tell you, but she was there. She was standing at the front driver door. Once again, now Megan's standing at the front of the car door. They like, yo, how'd she get there? I don't know. I don't know. She crawled. I don't know. She hopped. I don't know. She walked. I don't know. How you don't know how Megan got there? When you defending Megan, Megan is the priority. How do you not know how Megan got to the driveway and how she got back to the truck? You know, you just can't remember that. But you got all the details for everything else. And, um, uh, you know, Juan, they're just like, get in the car, you know. We didn't, we didn't, like, have a push that about getting in the car because we're just, we're in the middle of nowhere. At this point, we don't know what to do. We honestly didn't even think about calling 911 at this moment or anything. It was all a blur. Yeah, did you have one on Sunday? I okay, y'all. We didn't even think about calling 911 that night. You just said you was afraid for your life. A man just shot your girlfriend, according to y'all. And you didn't think police. Y'all believe this? She just said this dude pulled her hair out, choked her. She almost, she got in the car and was going to run him over. Megan's bleeding. They in the dark alley. And we didn't think about the call of police. We didn't think about the police. We wasn't thinking about the police. But you scared for your life. You scared to death. Your girl is bleeding. She's bleeding. <laughs> and you don't think to call the police. <laughs> Sitting, which is now behind Tori, 
and now I'm behind the box. How is Omega looking at this point? Is she crying? Is she upset? Is she scared of anything? Can you tell? Megan was, she was, I was great. I was, I was tripping. I was having panic attacks. Megan honestly was very calm. Um, and that's what made me think that they had a conversation in the driveway where she, I don't know, I, that's my assumption, but she wasn't um, in distraught. I was in distraught with yeah. her, I, you know, and, uh, so the girl that got shot allegedly was cool as a cucumber but you all destroyed and everything else but Megan is cool okay and uh sorry this is a Thank you. 
So I, I can send some material. So, you telling me <laughs> you will text T. Ferris nine one one Tory shot Meg, but you won't dial nine one one when y'all in trouble. What if he would have killed y'all? Like, what if he would have shot y'all to and? It was no 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 bullet uh, fragments in the foot. What if those were slugs to the chest and, and and to the head? Like you was that comfortable not to call the police that you felt that safe with a guy that just shot at y'all and just choked you out and pulled your hair out that you would text a friend nine one one, Tory shot Meg, and not call nine one one. Like, why are you protecting this man if he shot ya? You text a, a dude that's not in the vicinity. Yo, 911. Tory shot Meg. I'm confused. I'm so confused. You text. Someone 911. Tory shot Meg. Don't you know it would have been quicker to push 911 send? And y'all wondering why people questioning this shit. You text somebody 911, Tory shot Meg, and don't call the cops. And you dropped them your location. <laughs> Yo, bro. Bro. Now she sent the message to her mom. And she starts crying right here in the meeting. Yo, come on, bro. She sent the message to her mother. You call, you text T. Farris. You don't even pick up the phone to call him. You text him. At 3, 4 in the morning? Somebody asleep? Then you see your mother message. At 3, 4 in the morning? How old is your mother? Ain't she asleep? In the emergency, when you call her phone? What was your mother going to do for you? She in Houston, you in, in California. Why are you hearing your mother to tell your mother about this and not calling 911? Why are you calling T. Ferris and dropping your location instead of calling 911 if y'all in danger? Come on, man. It got to be. Is, is there any women out here with a brain? A man shoots you and your girlfriend, beat you up, and you calling your mother that's three hours away? Your man, a man shoots you on the dark block, pull your hair out, beat you up, and you calling your mother in Houston at three, four in the morning. At no point, nobody thought to call the cops. And then when the cops come, y'all don't tell them shit? And y'all wondering why niggas is doubting this shit. It's Yeah, like, I'm scared. I'm scared, you know? Like, what were you scared of? I just, I don't know. I just was scared. Like, 
probably should see it. I think I also sent her a health message. Yeah. <laughs> Look, she even sent her mother a help message. Yo, bro. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Let's 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 lose let's lose let's use some brains here. She sent her mother a message on Facebook. Is your mother going to wake up 60 years old, 7 years, 70 years old? In a dying emergency, don't you call a phone? You will call your mother phone, wouldn't you? You will call your father. You going to send them a message on Facebook so they can see that shit later when they're at work? And then she said, yo, I even sent my mom a message saying help. You sent your mom a Facebook message, a message saying help. You reached out to T. Ferris for help. You drop him your location. You do all this fucking activity on your phone, but you won't dial 911 and push send or call. But you got time to go on, log in on Facebook and send your mother a message. You gonna hope, you gonna hope she's woke on Facebook three and four in the morning. Oh, my baby need help. Oh, my baby need help. On Facebook. You don't call your mother phone in an emergency like that? That could have been the last time you ever fucking spoke to your mother. If you was that in much fear of your life. So something would have happened to you, God forbid you would have died. Your mother would have been like, oh, she trying to reach out to me on Facebook. Yo, bro. <laughs> now she called another nigga that she was sleeping with outside of Tory. She called the guy that she was sleeping with outside of Tory. It's a lot of uh, it's a lot of coochie slinging going on in that circle, dude. They all got a side nigga, fellas. Pay attention. She called another nigga while she was in trouble with her nigga. <laughs> she was about to tell her other nigga that her nigga beat her up. How was that going to end? This new nigga going to get in a beef with the old nigga? What was this new nigga going to say to Tori? Yo, I'm sleeping with her too, nigga. Don't put your hands on her. You don't put your hands on our girl, nigga. I'm fucking the two. She called her other nigga. She called her mother. T. Ferris. All before calling 911, but she's destroyed. She's in fear. She's scared. But she go on Facebook to hit her moms. She texts T first. And she call another nigga. Yo, these women is dangerous, fellas. Pay attention. She just said she called her other nigga that she was talking to while fucking with Tori. What she was going to tell him? Yo, this nigga beat my ass. Yo, I need you to check this nigga. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Yo. Fellas, 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 be careful, baby. These women are slick. And uh, he picked up, and um, I let him listen to anything that was going on. I just happened to 
phone and uh, told him, hey, like, this just happened, and you steal my phone, you know. Um, so you're on your phone, uh, open line, or open line, basically, you can hear what's happening in the second quarter. Oh, God. So... The dude, her new nigga, she give him a quick rundown of what's going on. Tell him to stay on the phone to listen. Y'all know what that is, right? Allegedly, yo, I'm in some trouble. I might be getting locked up. Yo, pay attention. See what you hear. If I get in trouble, reach out to my peoples. Black, 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 black. Yeah, okay. Just in case. Just in case. Just in case what? <laughs> Y'all heard up? This is the only person that I, I could call just in case. Just in case. She ain't want to say just in case I got arrested. Uh, Just in case. Uh, ju just in case what, Kelsey? Just in case what? You died? Like, just in case what? You call him just in case what? So he can fucking bail you out. Um, I still never have looked down at her foot, or if I did, I don't recall seeing her injuries or how damaged or whatever she was. Um, and, uh. <sighs> yeah, think of a good one. Get a breather. Um, um, and, um, and the strong so Tori is like demanding, like, shut up, like, shut up, like, Kelsey. Hey, yo, I need y'all to remember that this fucking interview is two years later. Not five minutes after everything happened where she's all emotional and distraught and everything. And, oh, oh, I'm reliving it. She's not the one that was shot. Not saying that she can't be going through uh, PTSD or anything like that. I'm just saying. She... <laughs> Yo, this shit is crazy, dog. You know, and um, the police, uh, when we're talking on the street, the police, you know, they're coming because the police man was behind us, but at that point. Yo, bro, do y'all understand she got a nigga on the phone listening while they in the car driving? This is before the police even pulled them over. You got a nigga on the phone listening. And you didn't call the cops. Why didn't you call the cops? The same fucking reason Megan ain't want to tell the police shit when they pulled up. Because y'all got some type of guilt in this. Y'all played the part in this. Yo, she got a dude on the phone. Just listening. And you couldn't call the cops. Yo, bro, man. Yo, this is y'all, man. Yeah. 
Okay. The police asked her about injuries. She said, oh, I ain't say nothing about no injury because I wasn't worried about me. I was worried about Megan, so I wasn't worried about myself. Okay, so why didn't you tell the police right there that Tori shot you or shot her? Why didn't you, why didn't you tell him he beat you? Why didn't you tell the police he assaulted you? Why didn't you tell yet? Now y'all safe. The police is there. Your mother can't do nothing for you. Your other nigga, your side nigga can't do nothing for you. T. Ferris can't do nothing for you. The police is there right now. Why didn't y'all tell them this nigga beat your ass and shot y'all? Since you were so scared and destroyed and everything why didn't you tell the police what happened right there Okay, now, once again, now you say the police question you about what happened. This goddamn girl said, oh, I did what I saw in movies. I asked for a lawyer. What do you need a lawyer for if you the victim? What do you need a lawyer for if you are the victim? Because they was getting ready to charge you with something? Was they going to charge you with a crime? They asked you what happened. You text your mother. You text T. Ferris. You got your, your side nigga on the phone. When the police ask you what happened, you do what you see in movies?
Y'all believe this. <laughs> Just tell me y'all believe this. Okay, now we know how she got Quan number. Her and Quan got released together. She said when she got out, her and Quan, Quan said a comment or something about like money talks. And what the fuck that mean? That can mean anything. After she leave the jail, she calls the management, this, that, and the third. She go by the house. Uh, the, one of the girls pick up. She goes and changes her clothes, this, that, and the other. She say, yo, I want to go see Megan. They go over to the hospital. From what she knows, from what she said, they told her that she couldn't see Megan, but she's saying that she found out that was a lie. That she couldn't see Megan. So clearly Megan didn't want to see her. Right? So now she saying she get a jail call and she thinking it's some other nigga because he normally call rent like come on bro you know jail calls only certain times of the day not throughout the night unless your ass is in the bullpen you ain't calling no three four five six seven in the morning from jail the phones ain't even in jail them just don't they don't even let you use them shits until the morning. When when they're after the count. 
So don't tell me that she was expecting some random ass call from some nigga. And he can, and, the, and the call says, you have a call from the Los Angeles County Jail. I, 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 I had to explain that for, for the people that don't know. But come on, bro. She going to act like she didn't know this was Tori calling from jail. All right, whatever. And she said, I never got to see Megan again to this day. Now, unless you are, you, unless you were just born yesterday, I'm, I'm going to excuse you. If you was born yesterday, I'm going to excuse you. If you got 20, 30 years on this earth, then you just don't got common sense. Because what sense do it make that me and my best friend, a nigga beat me up and shot her. And now all of a sudden my girlfriend that I live with, that I moved from a whole nother state, I live with you. And you don't want to see me? I can't go back to the house. I moved all my stuff out and, and moved in with you. And I ain't see you for a whole two years. And I ain't do nothing to you. I ain't do nothing to you. You don't want to see me after the hospital. After I just went all out for you. And fought this nigga for you after he shot. You don't want me to come in the hospital to see you. Matter of fact, you don't never want to see me again in life again. Who is that making sense to? Megan never rocked with Kelsey again after that night. Her management didn't let her rock with Kelsey no more after that night. And y'all think something just, just happened between Tori and Megan? Like, Kelsey ain't do nothing to Megan to, for the point that Megan had her move out her house and come live with her. Now all of a sudden, yo, you got to get out of L.A. in two hours and I'm never fucking with you again. Megan has never fucked with the girl again after that incident. And you telling me. She ain't got no, no beef with you. You tell me Kelsey ain't do nothing to her? And Kelsey sat there and, and fought for her and fought this dude and... All right. Now, this is somebody she said was her best friend. They did everything together. They've been there hanging out, everything. She know her like the back of her hand. I know Megan like the back of my hand. So then tell me, since you know her so well, why she don't fuck with you no more? If you did nothing to her, why did she cut you off? So she's begging people that don't even know Megan as long as she know Megan. 
This is her college friend. They 10 years past college. And she's begging. She said, I'm begging. I'm begging everybody. I want to see Megan. I want to see Megan. Why is she begging to see Megan if she was sitting there just defending Megan? Why is she begging to see Megan if she lived with Megan? Why can't she see the girl she was just with that just got shot? Why Megan ain't taking her calls, y'all? Now, she says Desiree from Rock Nation gets on the phone with her and tells her, yo, Megan's going to be down. She's going to be down for like a year. And you telling me the fucking doctors told her that in four hours? She didn't even get a cast on her foot. How the fuck is she going to be down for a whole year? And we see her twerking like three days later. So they tell you in a few hours that Megan going to be down for a whole year. You might as well just go ahead and go home. And y'all don't see nothing strange with that. Y'all think it's all Tory? Are you cutting off your best friend if somebody else shot you and beat your best friend up? You going to cut your friend off? See, now she's saying that she considered going back to Houston because they told my Megan was healing and it was going to take a whole year. But before, I, I understand she said Desiree told her, yo, get, get out of here. It's dangerous around L.A. You need to get up out of here. Now, she said she had her support flying out there to come stay with her, which would be the other nigga, I'm, I'm, um, I'm assuming. Right? The other nigga, the side nigga, or the, I don't know, maybe Tori was the side nigga, I don't know, whoever. But whatever, she said that they, her support was going to come fly out there to be with her. So she was good, and no sooner or later, she got a text uh, saying that she had a flight to leave two hours later. Now, why would Megan just up and book her flight to get up out of there in two hours if she if she didn't do nothing to her? Why is she sending her home? Why she don't want her friend with her for moral, support, moral and emotional support? If a, if a nigga did this to her, why is she just getting rid of her just like that? 
And y'all don't think Kelsey did nothing to Megan. All right. And on top of that, Megan just asked Kelsey to get rid of all her shit and come live with her. And now she kicking her out after she just moved with her. But Kelsey ain't do nothing. Yeah, yeah, ain't using common sense here, man. I, I, I'm really getting frustrated with this shit. I'm about to stop. Now, she says Desiree Perez tells her, yo, you need to go find a rental in Houston or something because uh, L.A. is too dangerous. Basically, you fired. You're fired. You tell me to go find a crib in Houston and Megan lives out here in L.A.? I just left Houston to come live out here with her. And you tell me to go find a place in Houston. You're fired. Why did they fire? What did she do? Why is why is Megan House dangerous now? If it was just Tory. So Tory's gonna run up in Megan's house now? She's saying Desiree Perez told her, yeah, you got it. You got it. She, uh, Kelsey, like, yo, I just moved out here. You tell me I got to go and move back? And she like, yeah. You're fired. And once again, she begging them, yo, can y'all give me some more time so I can get somebody to come help me move all my boxes and everything? They kicked her out the same fucking day, dog. Soon as she got out of jail, they kicked her ass out. And y'all telling me Megan ain't mad at her for, for something? She didn't do nothing. She ain't do nothing. But Megan kicks her out the house. Within hours, her best friend from college. Man, y'all some gullible ass people, man. And now look, she said a driver pulled up and helped her take all her stuff out the house and to a hotel. Megan kicked her out the house, dog, the same goddamn night and sent her to a hotel. And y'all telling me she ain't do nothing? You kick your best friend out your house and send him to a hotel. After a nigga just shot you. And beat her up. You don't want nothing to do with your friend. She just moved. She just moved all the way from Houston to California. Living with you. They ain't even get a chance to unpack her boxes. 
and the nigga shoot y'all and, and beat y'all up and you kick her out. Okay. 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 Okay, y'all. So now y'all going to tell me. <laughs> After Tori get out of jail, he pulls up on Kelsey and she gets in the car with him and goes and kick it with him? That makes sense to anybody? So Megan don't fuck with you at all no more. And now you linking up with Tori. The same guy that beat you up, right? Pulled your damn hair out, all that, right? But you now you mean know which story. After he got out of jail, after he beat you up. She attacked me with my heart, like, 
So now she's saying that she told Tori, yo, that ain't okay what you did, pulling out a gun. Why is she why didn't she testify to that in court? Why did she say she didn't see Tori with a gun in court? Like, why did she say she never saw Tori shoot a gun in court? So, Tori get out, he link up with her, and Megan still has not taken a phone call or spoke to Kelsey. And that's not weird to nobody. Your best friend don't come up and meet up with you, but Tori do, and you go link up with him, and you get in the car with him and go somewhere. But Megan don't, Megan don't, and you didn't do nothing to Megan. So now she's saying Megan's team is acting weird with her. She's asking them what's going on. She don't know what's going on at the hotel. They acting weird. Nobody's getting back to her. Why? Why? If you didn't do nothing to Megan, you and Megan they have a fight. You didn't shoot this gun. Just her and Tori was arguing. Why would she cut you off? You didn't snake her, she snaked you. I'm so confused.
So why is Kelsey so confused that her bestie of since college just cuts her off and she has no idea why? She has no idea why Megan never is speaking to her again in life. All right. She left 
me in the hot seat with them. After you just text me and ask if I want to be included in the statement, you still put out the statement without me. You know? What was the statement supposed to just that statement? Can I tell you what she said? Did she say everything to Sean? What no, she said was. Megan want her to speak on it. Why? Why is why is everybody in this situation have a problem with telling the truth? If 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 Tori just shot this girl, and that's the truth, why does everybody have a problem with saying the truth of what happened? Why? Why is everything still in the dark? Why did she come make this whole statement? And contradicted on the on the witness stand. Like why? Why would she do that? If nobody was lying, why did Megan lie in the beginning? Throughout, why did Kelsey lie? Like yo, all right. If if y'all, I, I'm I'm done with this. If y'all believe that that testimony is 100 percent true. And she didn't do nothing to Megan. You can tell me why you figure, how you figure, or what, what's the reason for Megan cutting her off for life after that incident. That's all I was doing. Just tell me why did Megan cut her off for life after the incident and she had nothing to do with it. I'll wait. Somebody tell me. And if she didn't do nothing wrong, why would she need immunity? If she did no crime in this whole thing, why did she need immunity? Y'all believe what y'all want to believe? But I, I don't believe that 
Megan and Kelsey is telling the truth about this situation. I'm sorry. Y'all can say what y'all want. I, that's, I, I just don't believe these women are telling the truth. I just don't. Especially when you listen to the phone call from the jail. She don't not sound like uh, she talking to a nigga that just beat her ass. But I, I'll get into that, that part tonight. I'll holler back at y'all in a minute, man. I will holler back in a minute. Y'all got to make it make sense to me. Holler at me in the comments, please. Please, holler at me in the comments. I'll holler back. One. 